All right, today let's uh, do the jellyfish marble. That's a that's a big fun one, and I've been doing a lot of marbles lately, so this is uh, this is one of my favorites. Uh, to make this big jellyfish marble with the tentacles and everything encased in the glass, we're going to start off by making some tentacles, and that's just going to be a silver and gold fume latticino. Uh, so for the tentacles, we're going to take some six mil. Uh, rod. I like welding that up on a 4 mil handle just to make it easier to spin. We are going to fume the length of this 6 mil rod and then we're going to heat it in the center and fold it over until we've got this. So there's now the folded over and the fuming in the center uh, will be protected from the flame and from being burned out so that we can uh, switch the handle up over here so it's touching both of them. We've got a handle on this side now and once we've got this, we put a lot of heat to it, just a lot of heat, and then we'll twist it all up into this here, and that'll form a, a latticino of silver and gold fume spiral. And we will then really heat that up and pull it out to make a really long one, like, like that thin. It's going to be about 4 millimeter diameter or even less, uh, just a little less. And we'll have a whole bunch of that. So to start with the body, uh, we're going to take some, oh, probably 8 millimeter clear rod and push it into a marble mold, giving us one of these half-rounded caps. And when we first push it in, the handle will be on the bottom like on a mushroom. It'll look just like a mushroom. But what we're going to do is we're going to put a little tiny temporary punty up on this other side here. And then we're going to cut this off on the bottom. Uh, and then we're going to weld up a little bit of this latticino here, just a short bit of it, on the end of a 4 mil rod. And that's going to be welded to our cap now. So this is going to be the body of the jellyfish and the center tentacle down below. And at this point here, we want to fume the cap. because We didn't do it here because this would leave a little mark right on top, a little gap in the fuming. We don't want that. So we'll weld this up and then we'll fume this cap. I'm going to fume it with silver first. That'll work much like a, a flux or a, you may think of it as a primer paint that helps the gold to stick to it. And then we're going to add some more of the tentacle material, just uh, putting it down along the outside of that central shaft and just pull them off down there. And we'll be left with this shape, which is our jellyfish. And then we'll just take that long four millimeter handle that's coming down out of the bottom of that and drop it into a tube. It's open on this end so we can put it in there. Let's see if I can get that in the camera view. There we go. And we're going to let it slide all the way down in and I'm going to keep it angled up slightly so that I can heat the end of this here and then fold it down. I'll touch it with the rod and clean it up pull it down a little bit and then I'll weld up a really big handle probably oh I don't know at least 8 millimeter if not 10 or 12 uh, here and remember this is all still hollow but as I get this really heated up I'm going to tip it and the jellyfish is going to drop down into the heated glass but it's going to be held in place by this 4 mil running up the handle which is going to hold it on axis and stable so that I can put a whole lot of heat up in here and condense all of this glass down around that pre-made jellyfish. This is not an implosion technique. I'm just encasing it in glass and trying to get it as bubble free as possible. And I will wind up with a long solid handle with a big solid marble on the end that has my jellyfish in it. And then there will be a little bit of scrap to the right here. That will be hollow with a 4 mil rod going right up the center. So we'll just cut it off right here in the flame. And then we'll add a little bit of dichro and some uh, color on the back, and that'll take us back to having our big jellyfish marble. I hope that uh, gives you a heads up as to what the steps are coming. Let's get to it. All right, let's get into this and use up that prep work we made. This is going to be the hood or the uh, uh, bell of the jellyfish, just kind of a mushroom shape. 
Uh, we kind of walk you through this in the whiteboard, so I'll try not to over narrate it. Just heating up together, and then we'll drop it into the marble mold, getting that mushroom cap shape. There we go. And then roll it up there and go on the back side just to smooth out that junction. There we go. There's our mushroom cap shape. That'll be the bell or the, the hood of our jellyfish. And I'm going to put a very small punty to it. Even though this is a 4 mil, I'm going to clean that up there. It's a little scuzzy. Uh, yeah, there's another crack there. There we go. Now we got some clean glass. So I'm going to put a very small footprint 4 mil uh, punty on this and then cut off the larger diameter handle. There we go. That helps to get everything straight and even there, just resting it while you make that connection, but while rotating. Now, real tight, precise flame, go in and cut off that handle from the right side. And don't make those long uh, stringers and fine hair-like pieces of glass. Just keep it in there, roll it around, and draw it off, and then clean up your rod so it's ready to go for your next project and then store it vertically in a can with a hot side up and you're good to go. So this will be our tentacle in the very center, which on real jellyfish are actually called oral arms apparently. I went and looked this stuff up before making this video. So we're going to have that running right down the center where it turns into the 4 mil rod, which will become part of the marble that's clear below the tentacle uh, in the finished product. So welded it up, pulling it out a little bit, drawing it down to around that four millimeter, which is going to be my tentacle size. So now we've got a good handle on the right side and that little tiny one on the left, which we can tap off and then we'll clean up the little punty mark before we fume it. But if we fume it now, uh, we won't have the little circular cutout left from the punty, which we would have had if we'd fumed it uh, previously. Now that we're mounted on that 4 mil handle with a little bit of the uh, latticino, we're good to go. So there's a little bit of silver on there. I know a lot of times I fume off of the coin itself, but in little projects where I'm doing repetitive silver fuming, I'll go ahead and throw a little dot of silver onto the end of a rod to make it convenient. A little less time to heat up. There we go. A little bit of silver, just enough to be a, like, a, like I said, a primer layer or even a, consider it a flux. The gold doesn't stick as well as the silver, so a little base of silver really helps the gold tone acquire well. There we go. And be sure to get a little bit under that hood also, uh, the underside of the bell shape. Let it cool a little bit because gold does not like to stick uh, when the glass is too hot or too cold. Okay, so the rest of that little latticino stringer we had set up, we're now going to rake down the outsides, uh, going around, you know, opposite and equidistant, trying to make them nice and even in, in uh, numbers, and filling in those little voids between. Uh, do not make little air pockets. You really want to avoid the bubbles as much as you can. There we go. So there's our tentacles below heat that up and work out some of the, the crevices a little bit. I'm not rounding it down to a perfect cylinder, but I'm really smoothing uh, the contours between them to make it easier to encase this in the tubing uh, without creating voids and bubbles. There we go. And that's working on the margin between the, the bell and the tentacles, kind of smoothing out that junction again. Uh, again, we, we want to be able to encase it without great voids. So that's pretty good. Yeah, it's uh, got a little bit of irregularities around the tentacles, but it's smooth enough I think I can get in there and, and fill them in with hot glass as it melts and condenses. Let's see if we can get it in frame there. There I go. 
So that's what we're looking for. We've got our silver fumed cap. We've got our clear punty coming out the bottom. Uh, try not to overspray your fuming. Do not fume your four mil rod coming up or it'll become visible in your finished product. Keep that fuming up around uh, the, the hood. Don't, don't let it go down onto your four mil clear. Okay, just gently dropping that down in there. Then we'll heat up the end. Now, now pay attention that you don't let that thing uh, change angle and slide out. You keep it pointed up a little bit or even just horizontal and it won't go anywhere. But if you get distracted, let that thing droop down, it will slide out before you're ready. So anyway, closed up the end of that tube. Now I'm going to draw off some of that material that was a little bit scuzzy and, and would leave bubbles and be unattractive in the finished marble. I'm just going to draw that material off until we've got some good clean tubing. And we'll hook on a blow hose because uh, I do want to provide a little bit of negative air pressure in there uh, at the right time. And I'm taking, uh, let's see, this is about a 10 or a 12 mil uh, clear rod over there for my left hand. And that's going to be a little bit of the marble portion above it. Now you notice right there it, it, it dropped over because I had enough of the hot material. And it's being held in place by that 4 mil in the center so it's not wobbling. I go ahead and weld up that uh, 10 mil over there. And not only is that a handle, but it's going to put some material up on top of the uh, hood or the bell of the jellyfish. And right now the, the emphasis is on heating up the area up that's going to be the top of the marble eventually, which is just now the area uh, above the jellyfish. And it goes right down to the margin of the bell. At this point, uh, I'm just doing the easy part, but it's all done. So now I can move over and really heat a bunch of that tubing. And I'm, I'm actually giving a little bit of positive pressure because I don't want it to condense down yet. Uh, I want it to be absorbing heat, quite a bit of it, but I'm not blowing hard enough to blow it out. Now I reverse the airflow, do a little bit of uh, negative air pressure inside of the tube, and all of that hot molten glass will now condense down around the prepared jellyfish tentacle area and include some of the four mil in that so that your jellyfish uh, does appear to be free floating. You don't want to heat down and cut this off while you're still in the tentacles or the tentacles will come down to a fine point and it'll look very odd. Yeah, and that will marver a little demarcation line there below the tentacles. There we go. See, it looks like it's floating nicely in there. We'll switch over to the little torch and we will cut that off. And there will be the raw material there then that we're going to form into our marble. Just letting it cool a little bit because I want the, the cut to not pull out the material from the bottom of the jellyfish. There we go, a little bit of final heat. We'll separate that in the flame. Now I'm going to put a little bit of heat to that tube I'm discarding on the right because it does have other uses. So right now I'm heating that end up and blowing it out a little bit so that later I'll be able to easily pull out and reuse both that 4 mil rod and that little bit of tubing. So there's where we're at. We've got a, a rough shape. It's not round at all, but uh, we'll get there. Go to a big flame and we're going to round out the bottom area first. And then we'll switch handles, round out the top area, then we'll switch axis of rotation, round it out again, switch over to a smaller handle and round it out again. It's just a, just a process here. We're going from big and uneven with large handles down to nice and round with little tiny punties that we can tap off and do a final polish on. So, lots of heat. And use large handles, you know, uh, long ones that get your hands away from the flame. 
This one goes down to 4 mil, which just makes it easy. Uh, you could just use the larger diameter rod as a handle. I happen to have it handy. and Since weight's not really the issue here, we can handle that weight on the 4 mil, but you wouldn't want to use 4 mil all the way up because that much heat would cause it to start drooping and bending and melting, whereas that 10 mil is large enough to handle the heat blow by and still provide a, a handle function. out a bit. Okay, and then we'll put a handle on that side which is now fairly round. Uh, we don't have to make it perfect yet, we're a long way from there. So, uh, put a, another handle over there. Now these are good handles. You, you, you can even just weld them on. Uh, you can cut them off in the flame at this point. You don't have to worry about tapping off some delicate punty. And we'll cut that one off in the flame and add some heat. We'll round down that end. Just getting it true there. Then lots of heat, and then we'll round out the upper portion. There we go. Had enough heat in it, so it, it rounds out quite nicely, very quickly. Give it a little bit more spin and polish. Changing orientation uh, helps smooth these things out quicker. There we go. pretty good so it's time to consider putting a backing on this and that's where we're going to use the flat die curl rods that we've made previously uh, that'll be fun so uh, first thing we're going to do is change our, our axis here and go at a 90 degree with uh, another punty there and again I'm still using one with a good footprint I wouldn't switch down to a 4 mil at this point we still want something that's really reliable And at this point, you basically want to be picking what is going to be the front view of your jellyfish, because this will be the front by the time we're done. A little bit of bleb there uh, got left over from my punny, so I'm going to just tap that off real quick. Don't need it uh, in the way, and I don't want to use the, the flame to draw it off, so I'll just give it a quick wrap, and it'll pop right off. So, lots of heat, round it out from that direction. And there's our dicro strip that we had prepared previously. So I'm applying it with the dicro side up, so that'll be visible from the outside of the marble, and it'll just provide us with a real dark background that'll highlight the jellyfish when viewed from the front. So just going on in a general spiral here, starting from the center, working my way out. And then a little bit of stringer that's uh, cobalt over white rod. And I'll follow the spiral down where the two came together. It left a little black mark, uh, a little black line all the way down the spiral. And I'm just covering that up with uh, what I consider to be a, a little more elegant color. I like that color. And so with the blues and the cobalt and the, the dichro, uh, we've got an interesting background. And it really does highlight that jellyfish. So again, we're back to making a marble. Uh, 
heating it up, really put that heat to it, melt that in. Uh, we did apply a lot of glass there, so you're going to have to heat the whole thing up enough to, you know, really become round. There we go. A little changing orientation there and rotating it around. Flip the paddle over so I got another, uh, you know, more moist place to place it and rotate it so that it steams up nice. Sweet. Yeah, these marbles really are fun to make. We recently did the Humboldt Marble Weekend, and everyone had a great time down there. There we go. That's looking pretty good. So it's time to start thinking about moving down to a smaller punty and finally polishing this thing off. Yeah, you can see even when it's glowing how that dark background highlights it. So anyway, it's another uh, large diameter punty, but I'm putting a smaller footprint on it than that one on the right has, which is pretty much fused to it. So instead of trying to tap that off, uh, I'm just going to put some heat to it, cut it off, and then we'll round down that end and smooth up that area where it was to it. Uh, quite often I would have a punty that would, you know, at this point I could just tap that off, but just to be safe, uh, we'll just cut it off much more gentle and less likely to wind up with a marble rolling around on the ground. There you go. Clean up your rods and put them away. And then fire polish that end and move that material into the where it's smooth. Now we're down to the small punty. We're getting down to four mil. That'll be nice and easy to polish. Now get them all the right temperature so that when you go together, they'll uh, stick correctly. There we go. It's a little bit off center, but not a problem. That's our last little mark, so I'm not going to move it around. I'm going to tap that off and lay that down, then we'll polish that end. There we go. And after polishing this end, we can tap off that punty while holding it in the marble uh, paddle, and then we will fire polish that little punty mark and uh, give it a few little rotations around in the wooden paddle without a punty on it, and that will smooth up that spot. And then we'll double check it, and it should be ready to be placed in the kiln. Just cleaning that up, removing a little bit of uh, material. Okay. Now I'm going to use the, the little glass rod to move the marble around. It's hot, and when glass is hot, it likes to stick to other glass, so it's easy to just barely rotate it around there. And, Move that spot uh, around the margin of the wood and check it for any wrinkles or deformity and then give it a little bit more fire to polish it up. There we go. It's looking pretty good. We've got uh, all of the mark removed. There we go. Take a look at our finished product here. There's our little silver and gold fumed jellyfish inside of the marble, dark background. And when viewed from outside, the back has a, like a little snail shell pattern. So, hope you enjoyed it. That uh, was a fun project. It took a little bit longer on this video. This, I think, this is one of our longest videos. But I uh, hope you hung in there and enjoyed it. Thank you. And uh, please like and subscribe.